you are a TikTok addict or a white girl, you probably heard about Stanley Cups. These new water bottles, which somehow make water taste tastier, are going out of stock within seconds of release. It's got to be inspired by Taylor Swift or something. But I want one. I want a Stanley Cup, and I'm sure you do too. But there's only one way to get these cups if they're selling out within seconds. In this video, I'm going to create a bot that will be able to buy Stanley Cups before they go out of stock within seconds of release. This way, I can get all the Stanley Cups and make dehydrated Gen Z kids drink more water because for some reason, they think these fancy water bottles will make them drink more water. Now, this would not be a simple process because Stanley Cup's website is protected by Cloudflare, a top security firm that is used just to keep the bots out. In other words, keep me out, but they won't be able to. And that's because I'm daddy. The way this is going to work is a four step process and we can't skip any steps. Part one, we'll be figuring out what technologies we want to use. Part two will be seeing if we can add the item to cart even. And then part three will be filling out the shipping information. And finally, part four will be submitting payment. So let's talk about part one first. We are using one simple technology called PubTierJS. And if you're a non-coder, don't worry about what this means because this is all about be copy and paste for you anyways. PubTierJS is what it sounds like. It's a JavaScript built framework that is used to control a browser and do browser automation. Basically, it creates magic. So starting off, any bot will look like this. This is a simple template that's also available in my description below. So if you run this code, you will see that a browser opens up. And this is what I mean by control. If we add this simple line of code, page.go to input a certain URL on Stanley Cup, the browser will literally go to that URL we put in. Call me the browser's daddy. All right, so we got the product we want, but how exactly do we make the browser add the item to cart? What you gotta do is what I like to call HTML inspection. So you open Chrome DevTools, you click this mouse right here, and you hover over this element right here. And you see there is some text. This is what you call a selector. In other ways, it's how we identify the element on the page. And then you go over here and you execute this line of code. Document.create selector. You input the selector you found and then you do dot click. And you will see that the button is clicked. Then you can copy this exact line of code and put it into your following code in your editor. And boom, your browser now is able to add the item to cart with a simple click. Completely hands off. You have not touched a browser. You're doing magic right now. And that's literally it. White girls rejoice. Your Stanley Cup is coming. And the next part is billing. Okay, so to be honest, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, right? You see all these input boxes right here. Well, we have to type in some information in them, right? Like when you complete a form, you got to type in like where you live, your name, your zip code, all of that. You know, we can't have our Stanleys going to Stan Lee. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm just kidding. He's dead. But you get the point. Now, PuppeteerJS has something special. It's called a page.type method. In the first argument, you pass in a selector. In the second argument, you pass in exactly what you want to type. So for this box right here, it will look like this. The selector is the first part, and my address is the second. Now, this is not my real address, so please do not pull up here. Otherwise, you'll meet all of my college girlfriends. Now what I do is repeat this process for all the boxes. And then I just click this button right here. Same way, selector dot click, and boom, I've successfully completed the shipping information part. Or maybe not. Now, after I repeat the process for all the other boxes, you see that there's a special box right here, which is a drop down, right? It's for the state you live in. Now, you can't really type in this, right? You have to click the drop down and select what state you want to live in, or you do live in. Uh, we all want to live in Florida, I imagine. To do this, the browser, you use the page.select method. The page.select method works similar to the page.type method. Again, you pass in the selector, and then you pass in the value of the state that you want to put, right? So for Maryland, it's MD. And then you finish off with doing page.click or page.evaluate to click the button, and boom, you successfully finished the billing part of this project. But now it's the hardest part, payment. Okay, so Stanley's actually very smart here. They know people like me, as well as my mentor students, right, who also know how to make bots and are learning, are trying to crack their site. So they're like, you know what? We are going to partner with Cloudflare, make the payment step extremely hard, and add an extra layer of security. Enter the iframe. So quick explanation. Every web page you see follows a DOM, Document Object Model. It is the foundation of web pages. Now, an iframe is a web page inside of a web page that has its own DOM. So you cannot interact with the elements inside an iframe via code unless you enter the iframe first. You know how they say you can't hate outside the club where you can't even get in? Well, this applies here. So companies like Stanley, Nike, and Adidas use iframes to make it harder for a bot to interact with all the elements inside an iframe. Now, of course, a normal user won't be able to realize that this is all a web page inside of a web page, but for a bot, it realizes it pretty quickly. These companies got some 1,000 IQ plays going on here, but call me Sung Jin Woo, the way I'll be leveling up and getting past them. So these lines of code right here extract the iframe out of the overall web page, and now we can access the elements inside the iframe pretty easily. As you can see right here, we can now add the credit card number 
using iframe card content dot type, not page dot type because page is an overall parent web page. Iframe card content is a web page inside of the web page. Now for the rest of these credit card fields, we repeat this iframe process and the code will look like this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, copy, paste. Even if you know how to code, you probably are too lazy to figure out anyways. I understand, I'm a software engineer too. Your immigrant parents are probably nodding at you as you copy this code, unless you're the target demographic of Stanley Cup watching this. Now we have arrived at the final step of this process and that's clicking that final button. And by now, you know what must be done. You gotta use your page.click or page.evaluate method, document.query selector, and boom, slap that line of code in your code editor, click run and your bot will work. Don't believe me? Let's run it. Que quiera ir su tiempo, entra a mi perfil.